This is the National Apprenticeship Awards and you've got a collection of some of the stars of the future in the room here. And there are so many people who benefit from these schemes, businesses right across the UK who use the apprenticeship scheme to find the next generation of, of superstars really. So it's lovely to be in a room with people who have all got some very bright futures ahead of them. I'm here to celebrate the amazing work that apprentices have done over the last year, but also the work of apprentice employers and everyone who's championed and supported them. Apprenticeships are a way of learning the job on the job. You need to get that hands-on experience that's so invaluable in building a career. For small businesses, apprenticeships are, are such an important source of talent. Small businesses have had a really tough time over the last couple of years. And so to be able to use apprenticeships to develop the skills they need, really, really important. This is ushering in the era of the skills economy. The largest vaccination program in history. This is what this nation is great at. When we spot an opportunity, we drive all the way through it. I, as an apprentice, learn so much through my employer. I get, um, you know, my education, but also on the ground skills. But at the same time, I bring so much to them. We just come in ready to learn, ready to work, and with so much enthusiasm. I think these awards are important to everybody else who um, who wins because it's recognising the work that people have put in at all levels as well in all different categories. Um, and not only that, it's also recognising the employers, which is really important as well. We need more companies to take on apprentices, and I think being able to recognise employers in this way as well is definitely really important. It feels absolutely fantastic to win. Uh, the last time we won this award was back in 2017, so to win it again is absolutely fantastic. Being recognised for such great schemes that we run, um, it's testament to all the apprentices that we've got on scheme currently. We're absolutely thrilled. It's all about delivering great qualifications and, and great career opportunity for local residents and also for our staff. It's been so exciting just to also see the support that I've received in my organisation but also within the apprentice community and I'm so excited to be here. It's just such an amazing opportunity to celebrate success of young people and so inspiring to hear the experiences they've had and what an amazing impact they're making in their different walks of life. An apprentice is such a worthwhile tool and asset to the company. They can be moulded to how the company works. They can be a real team player in all aspects of it. So 100% I'd recommend it to everybody. As apprentices, we really love to be there. We're so enthusiastic about your business, about what you're doing. Um, there's no way that you could regret it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Amanda, and let me welcome you to Lloyd's Careers Live. I'm joined tonight by my colleague Shelby, and we both work at Lloyd's Banking Group. Last month, our colleagues Kat and Mahari took you through careers in cybersecurity. Tonight, in Lloyd's Careers Live, we are excited to be with you exploring careers and customer services. Thanks, Amanda. At Lloyd's Banking Group, we work closely with schools across the country, helping students to build the skills they need to thrive in the future world of work. You told us you are aware the world of work is changing and that you want to learn more about the new and exciting careers that could become a part of your future. You also said that you wanted to connect with people working in these industries to find out what it's like to do these jobs and what it takes to make them a part of your career plan. With so much change, you let us know that you wanted to explore some of the new and exciting jobs that are growing in popularity and in demand over the next few years. We created this experience to help you connect with people working in these new and exciting jobs to understand more about what's involved. If you, then the world of work is always changing. These days, if you want to know what's going on in the world, you shout, hey Siri or Alexa, and your virtual assistant tells you what's happening. I'm sorry, by the way, if anyone's own Alexa has just been set off. If you go back 100 years, and believe it or not, there was a job called a factory lector. Yes, there was no Siri, Alexa, or iPlayer, and lots of people couldn't read. So factories used to employ a man, and it was always a man, to stand on a podium or lectern and read the newspaper loudly to everyone on the factory floor to, shop, to stop them from getting bored and maybe work a bit faster. Of course, Siri and Alexa can bring us news and much more. Someone had to invent and design these devices. And because we rely so heavily on our phones and watches, ensuring customers are confident in the product and supported when things aren't quite right is important. The way we learn has also thankfully changed, not just in the last hundred years, but even in the last few years since the pandemic. 
Some of you may go to university before stepping into the world of work, but some of you may be considering learning while you earn through an apprenticeship. We created this experience for students and parents alike. For students, it is a space for you to discover and learn about new careers and meet the people working in these jobs to figure out if it's right for you. For moms, dads, and caregivers, it's a chance to learn about how a big organization such as Lloyd's recruits, trains, and develops its colleagues to be the leaders of tomorrow. Tonight, we're joined by colleagues from Lloyd's who will help us learn more about careers and customer services and the skills, qualifications, and qualities you need to succeed. This is what our evening looks like. We're going to explore customer services, hear from our guest speakers, and answer some of your questions. We want to be sure that we answer all of your questions, so pop them into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. You may have noticed this evening that our backgrounds are very colourful. This isn't a Zoom background, we're bringing this event live from the very special customer service location, the Halifax, branch, Halifax flagship branch in central London. Halifax, alongside Lloyds Bank and Bank of Scotland, is one of the three brands that represents Lloyds Banking Group on high streets across the UK. We're all in central London. Let's find out where you're all joining us from tonight. So why not type in the chat and let us know. We'll see who's the closest and who is the furthest away. Ooh, Birmingham. Ooh, we've got somebody from Iraq. East London, brilliant. Nice to see you all joining. So the flagship branch in central London is amazing and it was designed by Lloyd's Banking Group colleagues to create a unique customer experience, one where customers can learn, discover new things through touchscreen experiences. It even has its own coffee shop run by Change Please, who are transforming homelessness across London. Later this evening, we'll take a close look at how customer service is transforming. Shelby, I feel like we need to find out a bit about everyone who's joining us this evening. So let's try some few simple polls. In our first poll, we're asking you what stage of education you're in right now. This way we have an idea and we can shape everything we tell you this evening. The options are GCSEs, A-levels or equivalent, university, uh, already in an apprenticeship, full-time employed or other. Okay, so we're almost hearing from everybody. Would love to hear from you. And let's see how we're doing in terms of response. Looks like almost half of you are in university at, this, at the moment. Uh, nearly 20% are uh, employed full time. And we've got about 22% in A-levels. Very exciting. Watching all the levels change. <laughs> Okay, and we're curious to know how you found out about this evening event. This helps us to improve how we let people know about it. So, that, so how did you find out about the event? <clears throat> okay, so we have a few options. Whether attended a previous Lloyd's Live event, through your careers advisor or service, through social media, through word of mouth, and other. Looking at the responses, most of you appear to have found out about the event through social media at 42%. Some of you have found out through your careers advisors or service at 15%. Word of mouth, also 15%. We have other at 19 and we have a previous Lloyd's Live event at 7%. So welcome back to the people that have attended a previous live, Lloyd's Live event. All right, it's now time to introduce you to the team who are supporting us this evening. Uh, in the background, we have Gareth, our event producer, who makes all the technology work for us in the background. And we have Ian and Elaine from our apprenticeships team helping to answer your questions in the chat. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and our two guests, who are also colleagues here at Lloyd's Banking Group, we have Damon Nagra, who is responsible for colleague engagement at Halifax. And we also have Holly Hanna, who's a comp completed not one, but two apprenticeships with Lloyd's Banking Group in customer facing roles. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome both. 
Remember, you can ask your own questions by putting them in the chat. I would like to start by talking to Damon to understand a bit more about his role and a bit more about him. So hi, Damon. Hello. So first question for the night, how did your career start in Lloyds Banking Group? Wow, well, um, where do I start? Um, so I joined the bank in 2007 as a customer advisor and I did this after completing my degree in um, business and marketing. Um, and quite soon I found that I loved helping customers and actually I was quite good at it. Um, so I was keen to progress um, and I was really, really young and, and ambitious at the time as well. Um, so soon after I was sponsored in, in doing some additional qualifications to become a financial advisor. Um, and 15 years later, I'm still here um, after doing many roles in the Halifax Community Bank um, and now sit in a fantastic head office role uh, looking after colleague engagement. Ooh, very nice, very nice. So you've seen lots of people start their careers in frontline customer service. What's rewarding about this type of role for you? Well, um, every day is absolutely different and it's challenging, but so rewarding. Um, customers will come into our branches and often you or I will be the first person that they, they would see. Um, and customers could be doing simple transactions like paying in cash or something that's really complex, like um, they've been a victim of fraud or they might be telling us that they've, lo they've lost a loved one. Um, so our customer service roles are, are so important in helping customers with their banking needs. And it's so rewarding when you've known that you've actually helped them through that. Oh, that's really nice to hear. So we're in the flagship branch today. But what other environments could people work in and still be helping customers on the front line? Yes, yeah, good question. Um, our branch estate is large and there are opportunities across the whole of the UK to really help um, customers. Um, but we're a multi-channel brand. Um, and basically what that means is whether a customer wants to use the phone or whether they want to come into a branch or they prefer to use the Internet, they have that choice. So we have lots of varied roles, whether that's a telephony based customer service role, whether that's working within one of our fraud teams, or even more importantly, um, some of our customers who are experiencing financial difficulties. So there's so many roles um, and varied roles and, and lots of great opportunities across um, Lloyds Banking Group. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I even started my own career in telephony customer service. So telephony and customer service is close to my heart. What kind of skills do you reckon people use in this space? It does sound quite varied. Yeah, you are right. Um, the, the, the skills are, are varied, but I'll probably just concentrate on a few of the main skills that I'd call out. So I'd probably start off with communication. Um, so communication is a really, really important skill to have. And again, don't get me wrong, you will develop that, that type of skill as you develop, develop your career. Um, but being able to be confident and to talk to customers is, is a really important skill. Um, and I think the, um, the next skill that I probably want to call out is the em empathy skills. So I think more and more this is becoming even more important as a skill um, required in customer services, where we, you have the opportunity to really understand and connect with people. And then probably the last one I'll call out is around digital skills. I think uh, the amount of technology that we have in our branches now and to being able to confidently navigate our digital channels are all important skills to really kind of help help customers as well. So I probably kind of call those skills out. OK, just in relation to the technology skills, is there anything in particular technology wise? To be honest, um, once you're once you're in role, you will get the, the um, some really good kind of support and and upskill around how you engage with technology. But things like today, you know, um, being able to join a Zoom call and um, because a lot of our communication internally in within the bank, uh, we use um, Teams and and, and Zoom, um, and then more probably just you know being able to do the the transactions that a customer would do. So even you guys probably on the call listening have got internet banking yourselves. So you know what, even having the ability just to do those type of transactions will really um, set you up to to be successful in a, in, a, in a customer service type role. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, moving on to the next question then. So with lots of us using the internet more and more and artificial intelligence systems such as Siri and Alexa coming into our lives, how are roles in customer service changing to adapt? 
well, we all know that um, that people are getting more, more more digital savvy. So simpler transactions are moving to digital and on, on and internet banking, um, which means that actually the customer service roles that we have in a customer facing environment are where we're dealing with more complex transactions. So they can often be like the, those moments of truth for people. So whether it's a customer who is vulnerable or have a complex banking or mortgage or, or a business banking inquiry. And as I mentioned earlier, it could be something where a customer might have a fraud block or having to register a bereavement. This is where actually our, um, our colleagues come and play a massive role. So we, we use a term where we say, um, machines do the ordinary, but humans do the extraordinary. So humans and, and people play a huge part in, in us in what we do for our customers. Yeah, I suppose you don't really get the same kind of empathy from a robot or a computer, do you, as actually talking to a person face to face? You can never take that uh, interaction away from uh, customer service, can you? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so would you reckon that customer service suits a certain type of personality, like having an inquiring mind or being able to deal with a setback? I think both of those, actually, um, Shelby, um, to be honest. Um I think I think um, having an inquiring mind is a really really important personality trait. I think, um, especially because our customers won't always tell us that they need help. So if you've got those kind of natural inquiring skills, you're a bit curious, you're a bit nosy, even it's a great skill to have because um, asking those really important questions to help customers um, when they might not feel confident in telling us is really important. And I probably would say. Um, Resilience, again, you know, um, being able to deal with setbacks is definitely an important skill, but combining that with a growth mindset. And I think if you've got those kind of personality and uh, that type of personality, you'd be amazing in this type of role. OK, what would you say your best skill is? What's your what's your personality like? So um, I think I'm very curious, but I think um, I connect well with people. So um, it doesn't matter what what. Um, what, what the top, what what background that the colleague uh, or the customer sorry is um i think that's always what my super skill was i was always able to connect with the customer um and therefore do you mean it was able to build that trust with a customer as well and therefore really able to help them so i guess that's probably what i'd class my super skill to be sounds like you went the extra mile then okay how does this type of role help people to develop and maybe further their career a few years down the line well, um, I probably just put myself in this boat. So I'm fi I'm 15 and a half years in. And I'm still around. Um, so I guess if you're starting from a customer service position, um, then to fulfill a career in in branch leadership is definitely an option. Um, that's what worked well for me. Um, I was able to demonstrate and lead from the front and being a role model. Um, but these skills are super transferable. And they're really highly sought after in other parts of the bank as well. Um, so whether it is whether you want to be a future leader for the bank one day, whether it's um, a other type of um, customer service type role. I actually was talking to a colleague this week who I've been working with and they've just secured a project manager role. So the opportunities within um, Lloyds Banking Group to build a career is really massive and exciting. And I think that the customer service roles give you a really great foundation. Um, to build a really strong career. Did you know that you always wanted to work in customer service, Damon? No, <laughs> it was by accident. I probably initially probably thought. Um, so I studied, I studied business and marketing. Um, and initially, that's probably what I initially thought I was going to do. Um, but also, actually, I needed to earn money after coming out of university. So, um, so I started in the bank. And like I said, I just was really good at talking to customers and I really enjoyed it. So that's why I was just like, this career really suits me. And, um, and I, was given the I was given the opportunities as well along the way to kind of progress nicely as well. So, so I, I can't see myself leaving now. I'm 15 and a half years in. I don't think I'm going anywhere now. <laughs> hey, sounds like you found your passion. Yeah. Okay. Last question then. So what kind of training and support does the bank offer to help people thrive in these roles? 
Yeah, um, if I haven't kind of made that clear, I think um, we, we've got a real, real passion for learning and development and that culture within the bank is really, really strong. So, so anyone joining the bank um, in a customer service type role would be supported with, a, with onboarding and training. Um, you'll also have a line manager that actually will support you all throughout your career as well. So whatever role you have, you, have, you will have a line manager that will regularly check in with you. And then, um, and this is internally then. So internally, we've got some really fantastic tools as well. So we've got learning portals, which basically you could literally learn anything. It's got thousands and thousands of courses that you could you could access as well. And then, and then probably the last thing, probably just want to call out, um, we proudly support apprenticeships. Um, and so this is another opportunity where colleagues through their career can gain banking qualifications as well. So again, with that all combined, um, yeah, we, we really do support colleagues uh, and people to really thrive um, in, in role, but also to kind of support and develop their careers as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Damon. You've really brought the role of customer service to life. So thank you for that. No worries. Thank you, Shelby. Okay, so as Shelby said, we are bringing you this event from our lovely Halifax, Halifax flagship branch in central London. Um, and earlier we showed you a video of this amazing space. Um, it is one of the largest bank branches with three floors full of content. Um, but as Damon said, a building is only ever as good as the people who work inside it. Whilst this space is packed full of technology, we have a saying that machines do the ordinary so that people can be extraordinary. Rather than trying to run around this huge place and show it off to you myself, let's have a look at a short film all about how this space was made and how it's changing the way we think of customer service. This branch is all about us creating an informal space, really welcoming for people to want to come in, reconnect with their high street bank, really kind of have a relationship in the community. It's a space where they can come and get a nice cup of coffee whilst finding out and being educated around you know, the great different services and propositions that we have. It's been 12 months and probably a little bit more in, in the making from first having the idea to, to delivering this branch today. And we've done lots of mock-ups, we've had some really kind of um, interesting digital ways that we've tried to bring the branch to life and be able to share that with people as we've gone along. And actually the branch looks pretty much like that digital image that we had, but nothing I think can prepare you for actually walking through the door. A flagship branch for me, it's supposed to epitomise the best that the bank can actually be. So it's to take everything that we do as a, as a company and to be able to portray it. So it's the best customer experience, it's the best people, it's the best propositions and it's to do the right thing for the customer. Very proud of the team that have delivered this and I'm extremely proud of the local team here who are going to be running it because they're just so enthusiastic and have really got behind the ideas that are inherent within the design. I think that the biggest kind of takeaway from me is seeing the reaction that we got when people were walking past outside Tottenham Court Road tube station and seeing the branch for the first time, literally stopping in their tracks and thinking, wow, that's a bit different. I'm trying to tone down my passion, but that's, I'm really, really excited. Overwhelmingly, I've got a real sense of pride in this place. I think it's the culmination of a, a lot of effort from a lot of different teams across the bank. And I think it shows, and I think anybody walking through the door is just going to simply go, wow, this is amazing. But the look of it, how modern it is, it's just all, it's really cool. I love it. <laughs> very excited about the future of the branch so customers don't feel like they're coming into a bank they're coming into basically an experience if you walk around the flagship you'd understand that this branch is sort of packed full of content so we're testing this it's all very new but I think we're gonna learn loads of new stuff this is the Halifax home uh, Halifax has a long history and heritage of helping people um, purchase their homes and save for their homes um, so this is our home 
uh, and this is what we'd like to sort of welcome customers into our home and so that's really the, the core of the design. I'm really pleased to be joined now by Rax Kalia, who is one of the managers here at the flagship and one of the founding members of the team that brought this space to life. Hi, Rax. Hi, Amanda. How are you doing? Yeah, doing well. Thanks. How are you? Well, great. I get goosebumps every time I see that video. And it just feels like yesterday when we were filming that as well and everything was getting captured. Wow. That must have been a really amazing day. Um, and, you know, speaking of an amazing day and goosebumps. I mean, this place is so different to any regular bank. What made you want to apply to work here? So the beauty about the flagship is we get to empower the general public, not just customers, and it's open for everyone. And that's what the events bring into that place. Plus, it gives us the opportunity to make our relationships with the customers and the general public really deep, unlike a normal typical branch where people generally will come in do whatever they need to do and then leave here. They take a moment, time out, and we get people from other organizations who want to see what we do and learn from us. So yeah, and it's a test and learn. So we're all growing individually as well as a um, branch on, on that front. Yeah, so definitely um, on the theme of the growth mindset and um, just sort of growing your career and you as a person. Um, so, and you kind of touched on the fact that it's different working with customers in this branch versus other branches. Um, could you tell us more about that? What's different about it? So you are on our branches on the most busiest street in all of Europe, Oxford Street. So we deal with vulnerable customers all the way up to high net worth clientele. So again, in terms of our relationships, it will change to the customer's needs and well as general public. And like the video mentioned about making, uh, helping people jump on the property ladder, making people's dream come true. We do that. We live and breathe that to the smallest thing, to the largest thing. We are here for the people. Yeah, being in central London, I guess you see people from all walks of life and uh, all stages of their financial goals. Um, so the other thing that makes this uh, space so different is that there's a coffee shop and an event space. How does that all come together um, for your experience as a customer service uh, manager? So what I would love in the future when we do these events to do it in the actual coffee shop space. So again, on a Saturday, just to give an example, we have code clubs um, before COVID. So we would have children from the age of seven to 11 and we're teaching them codes while the parents are having a nice little coffee and they're doing their good deed as well because they're helping remove homeless people. And they can so, actually see where the money is going because the people behind the bars are um, baristas who were once homeless. So you can actually see your good deed in action. So tell me, what do you mean teaching them about codes? Yeah, so again, the bank collaborates with other organizations. So we've collaborated with Microsoft, BBC, and now we're um, collaborating with Scratch. So uh, when it comes to coding, it's teaching kids how to make games, and then they get to show off their games at the end of the session, and you will see them grow week in, week out. Wow, so that's that is what so I mean fun. About. Yeah, so that's what I mean. In the flagship branch, we are here to empower people to bring the best out of public as well as ourselves. Right. So that that's definitely a, a very different way to interact with a customer than pretty much any uh, bank branch I've ever seen. Um, and and you were saying that there's a cafe here. So I personally have the coffee here. It's really, really good. Um, and, you know, what kind how does that change the environment here at the bank to have a coffee shop upstairs? To be fair, it, the whole idea is um, when people come into branches, they feel intimidated because they find it formal. You come into the flagship, it's open. It's a cross between Ikea, it's an Apple shop. So the youngsters to the adults will feel comfortable. And the coffee shop is where you can have your heart to heart chat. Again, when we as colleagues are serving our customers, we're sitting there by them sides and they're just pouring their hearts out, whether it's a good thing or they're going through a difficult period. It's a people thing, like they said, we're here for the people. And yeah. And like Not everybody saying, loves to have a chat yeah. over a coffee, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no. Um, 
so how do customers react to being in this kind of space? You were saying that they pour their hearts out. Do they initially walk in and think like, whoa, what is this? Or yeah, that's it. You hit it on a nail. They're like, wow, what have we just walked in? <laughs> they haven't seen nothing like that. And um, again, like the video says, we are meant to be the best or the best. So we've crafted our skills. And when someone new comes in who has no banking experience or doesn't know, success breeds success. So we teach him how to deepen those relationships as well. So right. people so, work ease. So what type of skills do you think would a person kind of want to come in with? You, you kind of mentioned growth mindset, but there have been some other things I think might be helpful for you to already yeah. have. And then you can learn a lot of things on the job, right? Yeah. But the most important thing I need the young leaders to understand is be yourself, right? Skill sets, all it means is ingredients, how to better yourself. So the things that since this branch has been open and we pride ourselves on people progressing in their careers, but the most important thing is teamwork, resilience, collaboration, communication, and adaptability. Um, these are probably, and then we will train you how to be a leader. To, um, the people who are watching, they already got those leadership qualities. They just don't understand it or don't know how to utilize it. That's where we will come in. But the rest, it's they've all fundamentally got it. It's just needing a bit of a shine so they look like a beautiful diamond. So what are some uh, ways to demonstrate um, the, the qualities that you just described? Um, what could someone maybe put on their CV? What's the thing that is a good example of that? Okay, so if you if the youngsters are doing any volunteering work, just talk about just make them to reflect what have they achieved. So they can say, I've been juggling a number of things. I do my homework, but on the weekends, I um, go and support my local charity, or I'm helping someone in in, in a time of need. Um, adaptability is a is a simple thing. They just can use their school as an example. So some people are strong in certain education subjects, but they're not strong and they're struggling. So they understand that they need a resilience to understand where they lack to develop themselves. And again, communication is be honest with yourself and ask for help. As a hiring manager myself and an employer, we like people to be honest with themselves to come out and when they're honest the communication is clear cut on on, right. on that thing as well right and, and it's studying. okay to be vulnerable is that's the one thing it's okay to feel vulnerable that's why we are here to the skills that individuals have to build on it right and that that can that can be difficult sometimes but i think it's a really great skill for for your whole life really um yeah and you know i think people are probably wondering do you have to be uh, kind of, is, does this have to be your first role, or can you really be any age and you know have any experience to, to come any in age, and gain these skills? Any age, any experience. My youngest colleague that joined the team, she was only 17, and the oldest that I'm managing, she's due to retire. I've I, I manage just as we manage different um, relationship with customers. I manage from a very young age from a career all the way to the end, um, end of their career. So everyone's open with both arms, if you can yeah. see it. And, and what do you think um, both ends of the spectrum have to offer? Like, you know, if say you've had a job for however many years and you decide you want to change roles, you know, what's something that you feel like that's, you know, what do you feel yeah. like that offers to this kind of role? Experience, experience. So I've got a number of colleagues who have been managers in another industry. They've given up those careers to come into a bank because they can see more potential growth for them. And it's understanding what skills they've got and how we can better them. Because in the flagship, we pride ourselves to create future leaders. And a number of our colleagues don't just stay within the branch network, they move on to um, head office roles. And I've been with a bank for 14 years and I'm in my leadership role officially as a manager, but I have been doing mentoring and other leaderships outside of my day job so it all gets appreciated so and when you're inside the day job and you're mentoring maybe new uh, staff what do those conversations look like what kinds of things do you discuss um obviously you don't have to give specific examples but sort of overall so it's like what are they scared of 
So um, fear is a key thing. People fear what they don't understand. So when we've all gone through that journey and it's how can we break it down and so on. So we use a sports analogy. So if we talk about a structure, the first entry level is a customer advisor. So we will, and then you have a banking consultant and then you have a mortgage advisor, protection advisor as one. So our customer advisors, I treat them as, as your um, academy football players, your BCs, uh, and then you have one um, customer service, which comes just after, they're my reserves, so they're ready to deepen those relationships. And then you have the banking consultants who are your starting 11 alongside the mortgage mapper protections. So it's understanding people's roles and how we individually coach on a peer-to-peer -peer level as well as a management. So it's a holistic people, so people understand their roles, their purposes, and the bottom line is we want to strive for world-class service. So that's what it is. It's not just coming to a branch and go, wow, you want the personality that you talk about forever. People come in, take pictures. We're in the world of Instagram. We've got blue telephone booths and people want everything and we're giving them everything. Right. So it's really coaching colleagues to be able to to bring that experience um, home more than just, wow, yeah. this that looks like an amazing building. Um, Cool. So um, speaking of the building, back to the building, um, what is your favorite part about this building? There's so many fun things uh, on all the floors. Um, I love the elephants and the kids zone, obviously the coffee shop. What's your favorite part? Um, the room that you're actually sitting in, the study. Oh. <laughs> I mean, this so, is a great room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be fair, everyone likes to fight in that because it makes everyone feel really wise, even though we might not read as many books, but it's like, Everyone wants that room because whoever sits there in that seat and the customer will be like, oh my God, there's a lot of reading. There's like really intellect. It's like, so it's a balancing act. Yeah, I definitely feel like I've, I've maybe gotten a little bit more intelligent just being in here. But it's also fun to read all the, um, these are all real books. So you get to see, you know, all the different titles. Yeah. It's, it's really fun, really, really vibrant. Um, well, thank you so much, um, Rax. And um, I really learned a lot about your experience and about, um, sort of what it would be like to work here. Um, and I'm sure we'll have more questions for you another day. So thank you so much. Thank you. Talking about questions, I do actually have just one more for Rax, but I want to keep it really quick. So Rax, how do customers, how do customers react to being in this kind of space with no screens and barriers? They feel welcomed. Is that shortest answer, they feel welcomed. <laughs> Brilliant. We sit side by side and we just make people feel comfortable on that. Whether it's on their phones, or bring the tablets, we're, we're, we're there to make people feel comfortable. Like I said, traditional banking, people find it daunting and they don't like coming in. It's a whole different ball game. Brilliant. Thank you for answering that question. Much appreciated. We'll let you go now. No worries. Cheers, shall we? <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next lot, a lot of questions, I now want to introduce you to Holly, who also started her career in customer services and has completed not only one, but two apprenticeships. So hi, Holly. Hi, Cheryl Bing. Holly is just about to transform from her or transition from her roles and after, sorry, I can't speak. So she's just about to transition from her roles after looking after personal customers like you and me to working with small business customers. So Holly, tell us a bit about yourselves and your time at Lloyds Banking Group. Thanks, Shelby. Hi, everyone. So I'm one of the mortgage and protection advisors in Lloyds Banking Group. So I started working for the group in 2016. So came into the group as an apprentice um, at 18 years old. So after my A levels, so I started as a level two apprentice. So that was with customer advisor, a bit like Rax mentioned there. Um, bit of an academy entry level there. So I went on to being a banking consultant. Um, with being a banking consultant, I also completed my second apprenticeship at that time as well. Um, while being a banking consultant, I was nominated um, for finalist of the Advanced Apprentice of the Year for Lloyds Banking Group for 2019 and 2020. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so during um, COVID as well, took um, undertook a number of roles in, in terms of supporting customers. Obviously, a lot happened in terms of customers' finances. Um, so really just played a part in supporting customers that were facing some financial difficulties. Um, and to put it simply now, I, I basically lend customers money so they can buy the dream home. So that's me. Oh, very nice. So 
what got you interested in a customer service role? I would say for me, I'm quite a people person. I enjoy helping people, talking to people, which you'll probably find out that I love talking um, and generally just being around people. So for me, it was really just that that personal touching being with with customers, really, that I just enjoyed. And and yeah, that, I would say that's that's the main reason why I wanted to get into customer services. So did you know that you always wanted to get into customer service? I'd say for me, people try and stop me talking, but I just can't. So I feel like when I when I start speaking to customers, I knew a bit like Damon that I knew that I enjoyed it and I was good at it. So I didn't want to do anything different. I didn't want to be in a job where I was restricting myself in terms of being just in an office based job where I wouldn't speak to anyone. So for me, it, it allowed me to come out of my shell and give me more confidence when I was looking at the customer service role. So it allowed me to develop um, as a person as well, really. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. So tell us what it's like then. Is it exciting? Is it boring? Are any two days the same? I would say anyone in customer services will tell you no t- two days are the same. So my, my role as a marketing protection advisor and even the previous roles that I've had, um, they're so varied. So a bit like Damon's mentioned, every customer brings their own queries, questions, um, needs. So there's always something day to day that comes up that you've never dealt with before. So it's really interesting to actually look into different queries and um, looking at the customer's needs and thinking actually I've never experienced that before and looking at maybe the process or maybe just having a different angle on dealing with a certain customer so for me it is totally varied so you can never have two days that are the same. And what has made you most satisfied about doing this kind of role? What gives you the most fulfillment? I'd say always the end result generally so for me it's seeing that customer end to end. So in my role now, as an example, I see the customer at the start. So when they're saving for a home, I then take them through the application once they've found the home and actually be right there at the end when also they've moved in. Um, But also on the flip side of it, it's actually dealing with customers that do have those moments of truth where they've maybe lost a loved one or they're not in a great financial position themselves and seeing them come out on the other side. So it is really rewarding seeing that end result with customers and seeing it all the way through. Um, But I'd say as well, getting like thank you messages and thank you cards and even just that total appreciation from customers where you know that you've made a difference to them. Oh, I bet it must be nice to get some uh, flowers from a customer when you've done a good job. Must it be is. rewarding. <laughs> oh, <is>. bless. <clears throat> okay, so what's been the toughest experience you've had to handle so far? I would say not nothing in particular as a certain example but I would say a bit like we've mentioned already um resilience so for me as a, a young 18 year old um resilience was was quite hard um for me um be- at the beginning so I maybe took things a bit personally maybe if customers obviously customers do get quite emotive over money so for you and me and everyone else money is important um so when customers things aren't really going right for customers in terms of finances they may deal with things um differently they may come into branch with um not feeling great so they may take it out when you wish you are the face of the bank at the end of the day so it's taken that um not not so personally which at the start was quite difficult for me but I think when you start building your resilience your confidence um yeah I would say for me that was the toughest experience for me starting but it's it's made me come out on the other side and I do have that resilience um in work now yeah I suppose it's one of those isn't it you need to remember that sometimes the customer's not angry at you they're just you know that that they're angry at the process so don't don't take it to heart and are there any skills that have helped you to thrive in this role I would say just general people skills so adapting to different customers you're going to be speaking to a range of different ages um people from all walks of life so it's being able to be flexible and adapt to, to speaking to different customers um, I'd say as well, uh, this is, is a bit of a skill, but just not being afraid of trying something new. So do, trying a new way of working or even trying something new at all. Um, ultimately, I think what they say is great things never come from comfort zones. So it's actually stepping out that comfort zone and and trying something different and not being afraid to do that. Um, so I'd say for me, it's more or less just people skills and wanting to try something new. Hmm, brilliant. And if I rem- remember rightly, you've done two apprenticeships, haven't you? Yeah. So how did you get into doing an apprenticeship and was it a necessary part to get in the job? Yeah. So the first apprenticeship was um, I found that on the government website. Um, So when I was looking at at apprenticeships, that's what I knew I wanted to do. And that was part of the actual first role. Um, 
which I feel like was beneficial. It gave me a full foundation of the wider bank, the role that I was in. However, the second apprenticeship within being a banking consultant, um, it was something that I actually wanted to do. So when you progress in the bank, it doesn't mean that you have to go down a set path or a set learning route. So for me, I was in a different role. However, you can push yourself forward for apprenticeships if that's something that suits you at the time. So even though you might start as an apprenticeship, there's nothing stopping you progressing, going forward or further developing yourself with apprenticeships. Um, so for me, the second one was something that I wanted to do to just kind of further progress, further learn. Um, but also it enabled me to complete things like professional qualifications um, which have it more strings to my ball, really, in terms of helping customers moving forward. Okay. And what is it like in practice trying to work and study at the same time? I'd say for me, it's as easy as hard as you make it. So ultimately, you do have to be organised. So whether your organisation skills are at one end of the spectrum or the other, as long as you've got some sort of organisation, it will work for you. Um, as long as you've been open with your manager about, about work, what work you needed to be um, completed. But it is it can be as difficult or easy as you make it but ultimately it's setting aside time for yourself and your work um, and getting things like that done so I wouldn't say it's hard or difficult yeah I would you have it alongside your, your working day and you do get time set aside about that what the bank gives you like 20% of your working week to complete your apprenticeship and learning so ultimately you do have the time set aside to complete the work that you need to do. Did you feel like you were fully supported doing during your apprenticeship journey? Yeah, I think from the apprenticeship team, my line manager was very understanding on what the apprentice in, like apprenticeship included, how much work that I needed to do, um, what my end goal was. So I think as long as you're open and honest about, with your manager about what work you need to complete, when you need it done by, um, but you do get the support from so many different people. Um, yeah, I would say there's, there's kind of no lack of support within the group really for apprenticeships. Okay, and how does the apprenticeship work? So you do have obviously your, your working job um, and then you've got kind of side set aside in the week that where you would just complete your work and your professional qualifications. Um, so, yeah, you're just kind of juggling certain things, really. And also you've got time within your apprenticeship where you can network as well. So with other apprenticeships, um, you'd, you'd kind of network with those guys, too. So it, it's quite a range of different things that you do on your apprenticeship. Um, but generally, obviously, as it says on the tin, in a way, working and studying at the same time. Thank you. OK, I think we've got time for one final question. So yep. as you look to move on to a different role, what skills are you able to take from your time in customer service that will help you? So the role that I'm going into is where I'm going to be looking after colleagues where they're dealing with customers. So for me, I know what good looks like in terms of customer service. I know what, expect, what to expect um, of these colleagues. So I know how customers um, kind of react to certain situations and know how we should kind of deal with certain scenarios. So for me, it'll be good in terms of coaching and what good customer service looks like, which is important for the bank. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Holly. Thanks, Shelby. Yeah, Holly, thank you so much for all that fantastic insight. Um, and for everyone uh, who's watching, don't forget to pop your questions in the chat. We absolutely love your questions, so keep them coming. Um, over the past few years, um, the choice for those of you leaving school or college at 18 has increased and apprenticeships are becoming more and more popular. Um, in fact, this year in Lloyd's Banking Group, we're welcoming our 10,000th apprentice and we won't stop there. To date, over 700 apprentices working for 400 small companies across the UK have also started their journey with our help. A few weeks ago, we gathered everyone together to celebrate the potential and power of apprenticeships. Let's take a look. We're here today for the fifth annual Lloyds Banking Group Apprenticeship Awards, celebrating the achievements of our apprentices and our line managers across the group. can use these skills that we've been learning um, and you can apply them in a lot of different areas. So you can do something in IT, you can do it in tech, you can do it in legal, you can do it in marketing and you can do something like what I'm doing to bring group internal audits. So there's lots of opportunities available for them. You're being paid a wage while you're learning and you're giving them this permission and this space to go and learn and be curious and learn more. If anyone was thinking about doing it, it's definitely worth like finding out from your age or your background. As long as you're enthusiastic about it, it's, um, it's, it's paid dividends. Um, 
Um, so now we welcome our final guest, Elaine, um, who is who works in our apprenticeships team to answer some questions about the process. Hi, Elaine. Hi. Hi, Amanda. You all right? Yeah, doing well in the cool book room. Um, <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Um, so we've heard from several people about their journeys at Lloyd's. Um, but what are the opportunities for someone new to join Lloyd's Banking Group? Well, I know some people have been asking that in the chat as well. So at the moment, we've got some great uh, customer service apprenticeship opportunities in our commercial banking business area. Um, and the locations of those specific apprenticeship roles are in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Birmingham and Wolverhampton. Um, so for those of you that are looking for a new challenge and an opportunity to earn while you learn um, that pr provides fantastic training and career options, then these customer service apprenticeships might just be what you're looking for. Um, we do have a, a lot of other roles available in customer service too that are not necessarily apprenticeships. But what we'll do is towards the end of this session, we'll actually share the QR code so that you can all take a a screenshot of it um, and that will take you to the site where you can find out all the details that you need to know. Amazing. So could you tell us more about the process of applying to work at Lloyd's? Yeah, for sure. So a part, uh, as part of our recruitment process, we're really keen that we don't want anyone to miss out on an opportunity. So if you haven't necessarily got exactly what is put on the role uh, advert, um, you know, we do still consider your application and support you. So people always ask us a bit about things like maths and English and stuff, which we can chat about. But there's really three stages in the application process. So the first stage is always some, um, some online assessments to assess your strengths and your mathematical skills. Um, and you don't need to be, a, you know, a mathematical whiz to come and work for us, which I know people always ask me that question. Um, the next stage is an interview, which will be likely to be a, a video interview. And if it's a level two or a level three apprenticeship that you're applying for, then, you know, that is the final stage. And if you're successful, then we would make you an offer. But for some of our higher apprenticeships, then there is a further stage to the process, which is an assessment centre. Um, where you do lots of activities as a group with other people um, that are also applying um, at the same time. But I suppose what I would say is remember that for us at Lloyd's Banking Group, we do actually recruit people on their strengths, not on their experience. So you've always got as much chance as anybody else when uh, applying to come and join us. Amazing. Thank you for all of that information. Um, so getting on to some specifics that mm. people might be thinking, um, do you need to be a particular age um, to apply for apprenticeships? No, I mean, you need to be over 16. Um, we've that I think that's our youngest. Well, that is our one of our youngest apprentices and our oldest is about 61, I think. So I think we heard already, didn't we, that we've got quite a wide range of, of ages working with us in the group. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why it's so great to work here. Um, yeah. Do you need any specific qualifications, GCSE grades or subjects? Yeah. Well, I would always advise, have a look at what it says in the advert, but generally you'd be asked for maths and English, um, sort of grade C or equivalent and, and above. Um, but, you know, for apprenticeships, um, we would support colleagues that don't have those grades as part of the apprenticeship. So don't let that put you off if you if you see that on the on the advert. And do you happen to know what happens if um, you need to prove an equivalency for maths or English? Like yeah, if you have I mean, international yeah, qualifications. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so if you've got international qualifications, what we'll do is we'll ask you for um, we we'll still ask you for certificates, but there is a process that you can go through to um, to get those sort of converted to so that we can, you know, we can see what you've got. But but yeah, we do, you know, we accept all sorts of different um, different sort of qualifications and things. But it's really important that people realise, you know, you've heard from so many people working in the group today. You don't need to have like an A star in maths or anything to come and work with us. I think that's a common misconception um, working at a bank that you would need a lot of <laughs> economics or something. Um, so I'm going to say this because I'm sure it's on people's minds, even if they're too polite to say, um, if you don't pass your exams, does Lloyd say goodbye to you? 
Not necessarily. I mean, I know that on our adverts, we generally put down, for some of you, you'll be still waiting for your results. So we'll put on their predicted grades. But certainly, you know, we'll work with you. So keep in touch with us and let us know how you get on. Um, and, you know, we'll take it from there, really. So it's not a definite no if you don't get the grades that you hoped for. Right. I guess that kind of goes back to strong communication skills, doesn't it? For sure. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you have on the top of your mind that you feel like everybody here needs to know um, going forward with their application? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think my, my sort of biggest tip really across all of our ap application process really is just be yourself. You know, don't try and be something that you're not. You get to an interview stage. You know, if you share our vision and you're eager to learn, then we absolutely want to talk to you. So, like I said, we do recruit people on their strengths, not on their experience. So, you know, for you guys, like I say, I wish you all the very best of luck with your future career, whatever path you take. And I'll please do give us a follow on Instagram. We're at LBG Early Talent. Um, we've also got Facebook as well. So, um, but like I said, we'll, sh we'll put some more detail um, up on the screen shortly anyway. Yeah, lots, uh, lots to look forward to. Definitely stay tuned, everybody. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, Elaine. Um, and everyone thank keep you. asking questions because Elaine will be answering in the chat uh, if you have them. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Elaine. That was really useful information. So customer service is such a big and important area for both us as consumers, but also as a potential place to start your career. Did you know in the UK alone, there are over 3.2 million jobs in customer service alone? That's a lot of employers looking for people with the energy enthusiasm to bring brands to life and deliver great customer experience. 3.2 million is an astonishing number to get your head around. If you took everyone and tried to fit them into Wembley Stadium, you'd have to do it 35 times and there still wouldn't be enough space. Wow, that is an incredible fact. Um, I also can't believe that we only have five more minutes of um, this event. Um, it's really flown by. Uh, before we go, we're going to have a few more quick polls to see how everyone's doing. Um, the poll that's appearing in front of you uh, is asking on a scale of one to five, how well do you now understand careers and customer services with five being the highest? And we'll check in on you in a little bit. I really hope we've done a good job of explaining. I hope it's all fives. I hope so too. And if it's not a five, definitely um, reach out and we'll hope to bridge the gap. So just a little bit over half of you have now voted. Um, I'd love to hear from a few more of you before we close the poll. Looking pretty strong in the fours and the fives category. About 60% about of you feel like four, so you're not total experts yet. Um, maybe have a few more questions. And hopefully those will be answered by um, any job listings or any future queries. Um, and uh, then 30% of you said five, which is great. And no one says one or two and only a small percentage of you said three. So that's, that's great. Um, okay, so we have one more poll. Um, this is also on a scale of one to five. Um, tell us if you think a career in customer services could be right for you. It's always interesting to see how people feel at the end of now, now you know all this new information. It's amazing that sometimes you don't even realize that customer service is the role for you until you actually start doing the role and realize just how much you love doing it. That's a good point. I feel like if people are your passion, um, customer service is a really fun place to be, really, really fulfilling. So about 63% of you have voted and maybe the other 40%, 38% are still thinking. 
But we actually have a good amount of fours and fives on this poll so far. Okay, I think the results are in, Amanda. All right, so we've got about uh, almost a little less than half are saying five, absolutely. Uh, about 25% are saying four, pretty pretty good. Uh, some of you are in the middle, it's about 30%, and about 5% are not sure, so that's a, that's a two. So great, great results, everybody. All right, Here. really interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. I feel like I've learned so much about the world of customer services, and I hope everyone who has turned into this evening has found it really useful. We, we really should thank Damon, Holly, Rax and Elaine for joining us this evening and sharing their experiences. And before we go, let's look, at, let's look ahead to the Lloyd's Careers live in September. Yeah, we'll be back the first Tuesday of September, um, which is the 6th of September, exploring careers in data science and analytics. This is one of the fastest growing career spaces right now, and whilst it may sound like it's one for all of you mathematicians out there, it's also about sto storytelling and visual graphics. So do come back in September and learn more about another career that could be the one for you. I know we've given you a lot of information tonight, and so we're going to flash up on the screen some key links to follow. Take a photo or hold up your phone and scan the QR codes, but we'll also put the link in the chat. So up first is the Lloyds Banking Group talent website. This is a treasure trove of information about all roles in Lloyds, apprenticeships and graduate schemes and current vacancies. The second link is the link to the next month's Lloyds Careers Live session on data science. So make sure to join up for that one. And looking even further ahead in October, we're exploring careers in software development, another fast growing area. And you don't need to have studied computing at GCSE to get into. You can book your space right now and we'll send a reminder closer to the time. And it doesn't end there. If you want some help and practical advice on CVs, interview skills, or building your personal brand, then you'll want to sign up for our World of Work Experience events running throughout August. They're free, and 97% of students who join World of Work say they'd recommend it to others. And finally, two great resources, the Association for Apprentices and Amazing Apprenticeships. Both these websites give you lots of insight around apprenticeships and how to find them, whatever employer or career sector you're thinking of. All right, guys, last chance then to hold those phones up, take a quick screenshot of what you want. We'll also pop some links into the chat below. Don't forget, if you've missed anything in Careers Live tonight, you can catch the whole thing again from tomorrow on our Careers YouTube channel, along with last month's Career Live, which was looking at cybersecurity. Amanda, it's been a great evening and I can't wait to do it all again next month. From all of us here at Lloyd's Banking Group, we wish you the very best and we wish you every success wherever your career takes you. See you soon. What does success mean to us? Success is making a difference. For our customers and our communities. Success is empowering people from the start. Building their confidence. Giving them tools to start their careers. Success is putting our people first. It's knowing when to listen. And making the time to talk. Success is supporting causes we care about. It's getting involved. All hands on deck. Success is making banking better. It's engineering a fairer future. Making progress and leaving no one behind. Whatever shape it takes, success starts with us.